And tonight on The Daily Wrap, Americans think Hillary Clinton should suspend her campaign as the investigation into her email server continues. Did President Obama give Joe Biden his blessing to run for president? And will it help or hurt his chances? And the day Megyn Kelly returns from vacation, Donald Trump takes to the Twitter, yet again, to attack her. This is The Daily Wrap, live from New York City. And welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Joe Concha, along with my co-anchor baby, a co-anchor, <laughs> my co-host. Sorry, it's that everywhere. Was great. <laughs> it just slipped out. How long did you work on that today? At least seven hours. Yeah, I figured. The timing was incredible, and we didn't rehearse. See, this is all organic. That was very good. Well, thank you, Rick. Rick, and we'll be talking to you in a moment because you've been working yeah, the phones yourself. Yeah, I've been working myself today. Yes, fascinating. Can't wait to hear what that's about. It's big, everybody. So. Stick around, not that you weren't going to already. To his right, she's a Philly attorney and America's pundit in Hillary Clinton Orange. It is Heather Hansen, and she <laughs> is back again. And finally, he's the editor of the wisdomdaily.com, and you're not Brad Hirschfield. Thanks for joining us. Good to be here. As All always. right, everybody, let's get right to the daily download. Hillary Clinton now facing pressure to withdraw from the presidential race in light of her email scandal, but to catch everyone up on how she got here exactly into this big mess, let's take a look back. The problem for Hillary Clinton that will not go away. In a way, reminds me of the Nixon tapes. I did not email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Emails from Hillary Clinton's server contain classified information. I am confident that I never sent nor received any information that was classified at the time it was sent and received. Their review of just 40 of 30,000 emails found four of them had classified information. Are you confident that those four emails were not classified at the time that you were transmitting them, sending them and receiving them? Yes. The messages were classified when they were sent and are classified now. I'm certainly well aware uh, of the uh, classification uh, requirements and uh, did not uh, send classified material. 305 documents flagged? Right, that's, uh, that's pretty much what it means, Luke. I did not receive anything that was marked as classified. That, we are told, is not the legal standard. I've never had a subpoena. Uh, you did get one in March. Couldn't, couldn't be more plain, the Honorable Hillary R. Clinton. And you think the American public is that stupid? The server um, will remain uh, private. Hillary Clinton turning her private email server over to the Justice Department. She has insisted she was not going to turn over that private server. The campaign continues to say that this is not a criminal investigation. We decided to call the FBI. They said, all of our investigations are criminal. I don't throw anything away. Did you wipe the server? What, like with a cloth or something? I don't know. Clinton has said she wiped the server clean. You tried to wipe the whole server. You didn't have to. I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't, I have no idea. I thought it would be easier to carry just one device for my work and for my personal emails. I have a, an iPad, a mini iPad, an iPhone, and a Blackberry. What I did was legally permitted. Clinton private email violated clear cut State Department rules. This is the usual. Um, partisanization, which I may have just made up a word. It's hard to claim this is all just a partisan witch hunt when the Justice Department under a Democratic administration is looking into the whole email mess. It's not anything that people talk to me about as I travel around the country. It shouldn't go away on the substance, and voters do care about it. I recently launched a Snapchat account. I love it. Those messages disappear all by themselves. Thank you all very much. Job well done by the Washington Free Beacon. But before we get to the latest bad news, let's start with some good news for the former First Lady. In a Suffolk University poll released today, 54% of Iowa Democrats support Mrs. Clinton. She has a 34-point advantage over Bernie and a 43-point advantage over Joe Biden. More on him in a moment. Iowa Democrats are also extremely loyal to the former Secretary of State. 74% believe she didn't break the law regarding her email servers, but 52% believe the controversy will hurt her in the 
general election. And now the bad news. According to Rasmussen, 46% of likely U.S. voters believe Hillary Clinton should suspend her campaign for the presidential nomination until all the legal questions about her use of the private email server are resolved. 44% disagree, 9% really aren't quite sure about anything. Also, a quarter of her own party thinks she should suspend the stumping until they get answers on whether she did was legal or not. Is this the beginning of the end for Mrs. Clinton? Well, first, before we get to John Fund, want to talk to Rick Unger because money is everything in politics, or at least it plays a big role. So you're making some phone calls today and you uncovered some pretty big news. Well, as we're going to discuss in the next segment, uh, we've learned that of the 770 major uh, people who raise money for the Obama campaign, only 55 of them have been raising money for Hillary Clinton, which is somewhat telling. Well, I wanted to find out how those people feel about things if Joe Biden gets into the race. Well, I was able to speak to some of those people, and as it turns out, uh, some very, very key fundraisers have said they will switch from Hillary to Joe Biden if Biden enters the race. Amazing, just like 2008 where Hillary's this support was soft and they jumped to Barack Obama once he seemed to be these, the more viable candidate. These people are responsible for raising so much money um, that it would absolutely be a blow to Clinton if that were to happen. And symbolically as well, right? Just to lose those oh, folks yeah. and for that yeah. to start getting out his loan. Right? David Geffen, that was, was a big yeah, turning yeah. point, right? Back in 2008. And it's just fascinating to me that, that this far down the road, and they've already been raising money for Hillary, that Obviously. they would make that switch, meaning it's not just a question of being loyal to Obama. It's a question of they actually believe Biden would be the better candidate. Mm -hmm. Wow. So. Well, let's bring in John Fun. He is a Newsmax contributor to get his thoughts on this. John, you've covered many election cycles. What do you think about what Rick talked about? And do you think there's any shot in hell that Hillary Clinton will ever suspend her campaign to get legal questions answered? Oh, highly unlikely. She's in this for the long haul. She recognizes how many people wrote off her husband during the scandals of the 1990s, and by sticking to his job and by just grimly marching forward, he survived and has a relatively good approval rating. Uh, if she were to leave the campaign, it would be a complete humiliation for her. She believes she can wait this out. She believes ultimately, I suspect some of her staffers might be in legal jeopardy, but she will not be. John Rick Unger, you know, as a matter of politics, you know, let's just presume, and I think you're right in what you just said, but let's just presume for the sake of argument that the Clinton campaign would even consider such a thing. There's absolutely nothing that I can recall in political history that, that would make me believe that somebody could suspend their campaign maybe four or five months while we wait for the FBI and then come back to it even with a clean bill of health. Wouldn't that be the same as dropping out? Of course, and everyone would understand that. There's one small exception to that when Ross Perot dropped out for four months in 1992 and came right. roaring back in the last month. But that's a different set of circumstances. Yeah, and he didn't suspend. He actually dropped out and then changed his mind. Right. John, it's uh, Brad Hirschfield. Quick question. When she suspended in 08, Hillary was only 12 points behind Barack Obama at that point. Now, it's true. She was way behind the delegate count. There are now twice as many Democrats who are saying she should suspend as there were Democrats when she self-suspended in 08. So it's going to be a long, grim march, but doesn't her past history suggest that she may well be dropping out? She only dropped out or left the campaign in 2008 when it was absolutely positively clear Barack Obama had a majority of the delegates. Uh, this lady's not for turning. This lady's not for quitting. And John, finally, during a press conference yesterday, Josh Earnest seemed to hint very strongly that President Obama would back his vice president over his former secretary of state. I'm sure the Clintons weren't very happy about that, you know, considering that Bill Clinton was just playing golf with Barack Obama last week. Bill Clinton in 2012 gave a speech at the Democratic National Convention that really pushed. I think John's hearing uh, oh, can you hear me, John? Well, I think no, we lost him. No, we lost him. John. Okay, we got to say bye to John then. Sorry about that, my friend. Uh, uh, let me finish that thought. Uh, 2012, Bill Clinton. Dem oh, you got. Oh, we got him again. Okay, Bill Clinton, 2012. We only have about 20 seconds. Gave a great speech to Democrats.
And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. As former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton sees her political career in crisis over her email irregularities, Vice President Joe Biden is looking better and better as a possible Democratic presidential nominee. To get more on the story, let's go to Newsmax TV's John Bachman in our Florida studio. John? Well, all signs increasingly point to a Joe Biden 2016 White House run, and the Obama administration seems to have no interest in tamping down those rumors. The growing rumors of a Biden run come as a new poll from Rasmussen Report shows that 46 percent of likely voters believe Hillary Clinton should suspend her campaign until all of the legal issues about her use of a private email server are resolved. But also one out of every four Democrats says the same thing. Nearly three out of every four Republicans say she should suspend. We also recently learned that Biden is inviting top Democratic fundraisers to the VP's home, the Naval Observatory, over Labor Day. According to the Washington Post, among those invited are top bundlers to the Obama-Biden campaigns of 2008 and 2012. And here's more evidence that Biden could eventually gain a fundraising edge on Clinton. According to CBS News, out of nearly 770 people who were considered top Obama fundraisers in 2012, only 51 have committed to bundling large sums of money for Hillary Clinton. Recently, White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest did nothing to tamp down the Biden rumors by heaping praise on the vice president from the briefing room. He's indicated that he would make uh, a decision and announce a decision uh, before the end of the summer. Uh, so those of us who uh, enjoy the summertime, I think, uh, would uh, assume that that means he's got a month or, another month or so here to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to think about this and announce a decision. Ernest also told reporters that he expects Biden to make a decision sometime in the next month. Back to you guys. And thanks. John, uh, you know, what's really interesting, I brought it up in the A Block, and, and John just talked about it some more in the B Block, uh, is that, that such a small portion of Obama's critical donors have gotten behind Hillary. Now, the question you have to ask about this, is this the result of the bundlers uh, harboring ill feelings towards the Clinton machine that go back to 2008? Is this a result that they're kind of trying to, to keep their powder dry yeah. until they see how this shakes out? Heather, what do you think? I think they probably want to hedge their bets. I think there's always been sort of a fear that there's a shoe waiting to drop when it comes to her campaign. And I think that what we're seeing now is that shoe is there and ready to drop and a lot of people are ready to back off. What I wonder is going to happen is 125 four people or entities have endorsed her. Do they now right. withdraw those endorsements? I mean, uh, that's an interesting question. And you've got some key politicians that have endorsed right. her. I know one of the right. things that surprised me was in, in light of everything that Tom Harkin came yeah. out in Iowa and endorsed her. Um, but, you know, Brad, we talked earlier about some of those, some of the small group Mm -hmm. that have been raising money from her might ditch or some told me they will ditch if, if Joe Biden runs. I mean, how does Hillary keep this going? Well, look, I pushed in the previous segment, I think she's going to have to drop out at some point because it's not sustainable. And there's and the, the numbers issue on fundraising, because I know two of the people who were invited to the vice president's right. home. It turns out there's a whole cadre of people who were significant Clinton supporters who were never big Obama supporters who got back in. Right. But they've made it clear to her, I'm told, that the way this is going, if Biden jumps in, they will follow him. And the truth is the numbers are bearing it out. The truth is Biden beats Trump by 12 percent, according to recent polling. He's in a dead heat with Bush. And there's every reason to believe that if, however this might happen, Kasich gets the nomination, mm -hmm. right, he's the only person out there who could maybe beat yeah, Biden. Yeah. So I think Hillary's going to have to assess this and then live with either saying, I will do anything that supports Hillary or I'm going to actually do what I believe in is for the good of the Democratic Party. So guys, either way, the Republicans, I think, win. Guys, there's considerable discussion that the, one of the difficulties that Joe Biden would face if he does decide to jump in is how he's going to organize a campaign this late in the game. Now, I recall when John McCain went up to New Hampshire with no money, no campaign organization. He flew coach, as the legend goes, because uh, he didn't have anything. He pulled off a win there and went on to win the nomination uh, in 2008. Are we being a little premature, Joe, uh, in, in saying that 
Biden can't pull it together with the time he has left? I'm going to use that word again. Absentively, yeah. we're being premature. There are 464 days until the election. It used to be that you didn't announce until much later anyway. Just because everybody's announcing earlier, it doesn't mean he can't organize. In this, and with social media and everything else in terms of messaging, everything moves faster anyway. So, no, he's not behind yeah, the curve. I, I kind of feel that way, too, Heather. We're here actually talking about this at this point. Yeah. Hillary's finished. Biden's jumping in. You told me this a month ago. I'd say you're crazy. Right. Right. On the other hand, I think, I don't know if you agree or not, Heather, we have to be careful to start saying that Hillary's finished. Hillary is not finished. Right. The media might want to tell that story. Uh, but she's not finished. She's winning handily in Iowa. Absolutely. She's not doing as well in, uh, in in New Hampshire because it's next door to Bernie Sanders' home. Right. Uh, and if she gets to South Carolina, she's going to start to run it up. Yeah, so. I, I don't think that she's finished. And I think her numbers with the minorities are far better than Biden's are. I think that to cut her out at this point, knowing the Clintons the way that we do, would really be um, a lack of foresight. I think she's going to be in it till the end. I, I tend to agree unless she gets pushed out by the FBI. It does at this point, however, seem clear that the White House might certainly favor a Biden campaign over the Clinton campaign. In fact, the president hasn't ruled out the possibility that he might actually endorse one primary candidate over another, which really doesn't happen very often. Should Obama actually do that? Should he officially endorse his vice president? Could that have a boomerang effect, Brad, by freeing Mrs. Clinton to uh, get away from any loyalty she might owe to the administration? Boy, I don't see how. Whether he should or he shouldn't, it's unprecedented. And I think even saying that he's open to it, he has told the world who he wants, whether he does right. it or not. Doesn't it make you wonder what he knows that we don't? Well, I think he's, you know, I, I think you can take him at his word on this. I think he's been very happy with Joe Biden as his yeah. vice president. And he said it's the best decision he made. So I think that has a lot to do with it. In any event, do you think President Obama's endorsement will affect the Democrats' presidential nomination? Uh, let us know what you think at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Coming up next, it's Donald Trump time. This time with Megyn Kelly, and they're at it again. You don't want to miss this. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back to Daily Wrap. Let's check in with the voracious Steve Malzberg and see what he has planned for tonight. Steve, Joe, the Trump Fox war has heated up once again. We'll talk about that. Bill Crystal will be here to weigh in. Also, George Pataki, um, we'll talk about his candidacy for the presidency of the United States. And Rick Santorum will weigh in on Planned Parenthood and more. The Malzberg panel, Gimme Five featuring Ben Carson. It's all straight ahead at 7 p.m. Eastern, right after the Daily Wrap. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several... O'Donnell. A lot of people, but what is it with you and Megyn Kelly? Well, I just don't respect her as a journalist. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. I think she's highly overrated. You know, but he why? felt attacked. It wasn't an attack. It was a fair question. But I get it. And, and he's in the arena, and so am I. So it, it's okay with me that there's, you know, some consternation. I'm sure he'll get over that, and we'll be fine, and right. so will America. He called, I was very angry with the way I was treated, and, you know, perhaps... Justifiedly, I think justifiedly, but Roger Ailes, who's an amazing guy and an amazing executive, frankly, he called me yesterday, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm fine with it. Well, the truce between Fox News and Donald Trump seems to have ended as Mr. Trump takes Twitter once again to bash Megyn Kelly. In the span of eight minutes last night, Mr. Trump tweeted, Megyn Kelly must have had a terrible vacation. She's really off her game, was afraid to confront Dr. Cornell West, no clue on immigration, and I like the Kelly file better without Megyn Kelly. Perhaps she could take another 11-day unscheduled vacation. Then he retweeted the following tweets, quote, the bimbo back in town, I hope not for long, and Megyn Kelly has come back looking like Nancy Grace, yikes. Fox News chief Roger Ailes issues a statement today urging Trump to apologize, saying Donald Trump's surprise and unprovoked attack on Megyn Kelly during her show last night is an unacceptable, as unacceptable as it is disturbing. Megyn Kelly represents the very best of American journalism, and all of us at Fox News Channel reject the crude and irresponsible attempts to suggest 
otherwise, unquote. Not to be undone, Trump fired back in a statement saying, I totally disagree with the Fox statement. I do not think Megyn Kelly is a quality journalist. Hopefully in the future I will be proven wrong and she'll be able to elevate her standards to a level of professionalism that a network such as Fox deserves. Okay. Is anyone surprised that Trump went on the offensive here against Megyn Kelly after all seemed to be fairly well? Brad? No, not at all. I mean, look, the history of Trump is that he surrounds himself with yes people. From the very beginning of that debate, Megyn Kelly didn't want to play that role. But I also think everyone should grow a thicker skin. It's just not that big a deal. At the end of the day, the question that I'm interested in is, why does this approach of Donald's work for conservative women? What is the great conservative tradition that he's appealing to in which insulting and degrading women is considered acceptable? I just don't get that. I'd love to understand why is that working? Rick? There, there is a bigger deal here. You know, by all accounts, uh, Roger Ailes and Donald Trump reached an agreement. And instantly, Donald Trump was ready to break that agreement. Uh, I don't think that Megan did anything on her show last night that would have re-insulted Donald Trump. So all I can take from this is he really doesn't care what his agreements are if he's if if he's just in the mood to say nasty things. Do you, the, the criticism I heard most today is that it does not illustrate the maturity of a presidential candidate. That, as Rick said, I'm provoked here. It, I, I know we have a lot of people watching that 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 love Donald Trump and are on on the bandwagon. The poll numbers keep going up, and there's a lot of things he's doing right in terms of communicating. But in this case, you cannot look at this and say that Megyn Kelly did anything to provoke this outside of returning from vacation and going on her show. Here we've got two very good businessmen, right? Mm -hmm. And this is getting more press for Donald Trump. It's getting more press for Fox. It's getting more press for Megyn Kelly. She got better numbers than she's ever had last night, than the, this year, I guess. Mm -hmm. She beat all of the other cable news stations combined. She did better in the demo than anybody else. Trump himself was obviously watching because he was able to tweet about it. I don't know that these two gentlemen aren't just being very, very savvy about the well, way actually, that they're managing I'm, I'm their. Not I'm not worried about Megyn Kelly. She'll be fine. She can take care of herself. What I'm worried about is we are having a discussion here about a presidential candidate. And look what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, I, I think that there's something to be said for that. I mean, is he going to troll other senators or other diplomats from other countries in the same way if they ask him a question that he does not like? I think that that is a valid point. But I think here, this has done so well to raise his, his publicity that he's just going to continue to ride that doesn't need any more rate. publicity, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> And, and, and I don't know. The thing is, if, if Megyn Kelly didn't ask that question about women, you'd be guaranteed that Democrats would have in a general right. election Absolutely. if he got the nomination. Anyway, should Donald Trump let his issues with Megyn Kelly go? Go to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Let us know. And next up, IRS targeting scandal, new revelations. And if you want to get your own Make America Great Again hat, just like the one Donald Trump wears, go to Newsmax.com slash TrumpCap or call 1-800-933-8396. Again, go to Newsmax.com slash TrumpCap or call 1-800-933-8396. My counsel has advised me that I have not waived my constitutional rights under the Fifth Amendment, and on his advice, I will decline to answer any question on the subject matter of this hearing. So you're not going to tell us who wanted to fix the problem caused by Citizens United? On the advice of my counsel, I respectfully exercise my Fifth Amendment right and decline to answer that question. And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. Remember a time long, long ago when the words Hillary and email were not synonymous. It was a time when if you were thinking about an email scandal, you were far more likely to think IRS, Tea Party, and of course, Lois Lerner. It was two years ago when Ms. Lerner was the key player in the allegations that she and possibly her higher-ups in the IRS and maybe even the Obama administration were targeting Tea Party groups seeking 501c3 tax-exempt status. Once the investigation began, Ms. Lerner, who chose to take the fifth when called to testify before Congress, insisted that she did nothing to break the law. However, congressional investigators remained unconvinced and ordered, by way of subpoena, that her, emails, her email records be produced for review by the House Oversight Committee. 
Those emails were never produced as the IRS informed the committee that the 422 backup tapes containing all of Lerner's emails had been erased and were not likely to be recoverable. Well, now, as a result of the Freedom of Information Act, a lawsuit conducted by Judicial Watch, it turns out that Lois Lerner likely had two personal email accounts that she also used to conduct IRS business. One of these accounts operated under her name, the other account operating under the name Toby Miles. Note that Ms. Lerner's husband's name is Mike Miles. While investigators may have been aware of the first personal account, it appears that the second email account comes as complete news to the investigators. Heather Hansen, what does this mean to the entire case that still continues with Lois Lerner? Well, it doesn't mean a lot with regard to the Judicial Watch case because they found out this information in response to that action. And they were the, the attorney for the IRS was telling the judge, listen, there's this other account. Toby's actually the name of her pet. So it's in the uh, name of her okay. pet and her husband's last name. But what it does mean is that there's yet more information to be sought. And that's why I think we talked about this with regard to Hillary. When it comes to my cases, emails never die. The stuff on the computer never dies. Unless, there's they're, metadata, unless they're wiped off. But yeah, even if they're wiped off, there's ways to, re, to re, reorganize them well, then, and, re, well, then, and well, find well, them. Well, see, this is what I find so curious, because let's compare this to Hillary. We've all heard about the, the wiped server, right? Right. So, but they don't think it's going to be so easy to, to recover easy. that data. Sure, it's not easy, but that's what the FBI is doing right now. They're continuing to say, we don't know whether that stuff is recoverable. And not all of it will be, but you've got to then remember. Then why would it be different for Lois Lerner? But it's a similar situation because now they're finding other email addresses. The reason that they found this pet in her husband's last name is because it was copied in one of the emails that they did find. Emails go to people. So you start looking to the people where the emails go. You know, just as with Hillary Clinton, Uma Abedin and Cheryl uh, Mills, mm -hmm. the different people that she was emailing with, you start just, it's a web that goes outwards. And so the same thing is gonna happen with the IRS. My issue with the IRS is people have been calling for a special prosecutor for that case for the two years that this has been pending. It's probably not going to happen if but it hasn't by now. But right? it's time. I mean, the president has said that there wasn't a smidgen of corruption. Come on. Joe, you know, this won't die. Is the only way to get this gone for good is to have that special prosecutor. I mean, it's been two years. We've all been aware of it. It's, it's receded in the news, but it's still going on as, as an investigation. What do we got to do to get rid of this? I, I think as a result of what we're seeing with Hillary Clinton, I think that helps revitalize this. Like, ooh, sure. a second server. Oh, had second email account. Who names her dog Toby, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and you realize, that you know. That was breaking news, though. I didn't know that's what Toby oh, yeah. was. The dog. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it, but it, her husband's name's Mike Miles, Mike Miles right? Yeah. 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 Great if it's Mike Myers, because then you have the whole guy from Halloween. <laughs> at least you didn't go with Carlos Danger. That's, that's yeah. the only real praise I could give Lois Lerner at this point. Brad, does it ever end? Or does it, let me ask it this way, the Obama administration is coming to an end. Whether you're happy about that, sad about I think that. That's a constitutional it's requirement. Coming, it's coming to an end. Does this die with it? No, I don't think it will. I think here Justice Brandeis was correct. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. And until we get real sunlight on this case, it shouldn't go away. The truth is, it's not just a second account, it's a third account. She has a personal email account, and that's probably totally appropriate. But you have to wonder if she has a professional account and she has a personal account, well, we, what exactly is the doggy account right, for? Right. right. Well, we we know, we know that the, uh, if what you call the professional account, the IRS account, that is gone. Right. All of those tapes we know were wiped. Wiped. Were wiped. Destroyed. No, don't underestimate the, the ability to track down likely recipients of other messages and work backwards That's from there. Right. That's why they call it the internet. It is a web. It is a net, and you can track stuff down but with that, remarkable that's ability. That's going to take a long time to do an yeah. investigation. Well, you said, will it ever go away? Right. But, I mean, it's been plotting away while we haven't been talking about it. It will continue to do yeah, so, but may, I think it's an important issue that people can't just yeah I, I don't think we're going to see the end of it so quick i have to agree so what do you think about this latest revelation of the irs scandal go to newsmaxtv.com slash comments and let us know coming up next it's that time again we read some of your viewer comments there's some good ones tonight don't go anywhere And yeah, welcome back to Daily Wrap. Let's read some of your viewer comments. First up, we have a comment from Ken about yesterday's market numbers who says, Hey guys, I'm no stock market expert, but I agree with Mr. Unger. Wow, and that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> there is no need to panic. 
I think that, if anything, this is simply a natural correction. Good smart stuff. Smart guy, smart guy, Ken. And Jeff seems to disagree with that. He says, realize this correction is far from over. The fact that there was little panic is proof of it. It doesn't matter if it's computers, people still program them. A seven-year cycle is coming due, and it's not even September yet. Remember Mark Haynes' bottom in 09? No. He called, he called it to the day because the market felt like it was going down forever and not coming back. Today was far from that. Today was likely the end of the beginning. Okay. Mark Haynes, I believe, of CNBC yeah. uh, Morning Show, yeah. right? I like Mark. Uh, well, last night we asked you what you all thought of the Biden Warren ticket. Watching the fall, that's his name, asked, what records would Biden or Warren have to run on, question mark? <laughs> then again, I guess they don't need one. Fascinating. Rick. Well, Biden has only served in the Senate longer than just about anybody <laughs> yeah. alive, so there might be some record there. I think he and, had oh, yeah, right. yeah there was record. there was that, well, he had a phenomenal record in the Senate, and he did spend eight years as vice president, but other than that, eh. Uh -oh. um, Michael says, no, no, no to Biden Warren tickets. Sharpton would be better. <laughs> Michael, please. Okay, Randall says, we're never going to touch that one. After the Fox News debate hit piece on Donald Trump, I considered canceling my new subscription to my provider. It reminded me too much of the old CNN days. But then I saw your channel. That's Newsmax TV. Nice show. <laughs> but I think if you guys could sign Hannity, Levin, or Rush Limbaugh, because that won't cost anything, no, and then it be Newsmax our show TV. Yeah. <laughs> right. Why does Rush make like $50 million yeah. a year? Something crazy. And Sean makes at least, I don't know, $45, $50 an hour. Then Newsmax. <laughs> TV could be the ultimate news network replacing Fox News. Take care. That was a joke watch, about Sean. We know this. Sean. Watch yeah. this. We will not be bringing Sean to you here, but you can listen to me on his show on Thursday. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> Racian says, I agree Trump should let this go. I don't care about Bimbo Kelly. Oh, God. It will look childish, and I think it's better to talk about what he plans to do as president. I agree with you there. Don't go off track and give the nomination to another in the Beltway candidate. Interesting. So he so he calls lambasted Trump, but then used the bimbo yeah, uh, insult in the same get breath. Get but what's interesting, it. he doesn't want another in the Beltway candidate, and that's the bottom line. That's People do not want someone who is in the Beltway, but, and Trump is the loudest voice from outside the Beltway. Doesn't it fascinate you that all of these people love Megyn Kelly until she asked one question, and now she's a bimbo? Yeah. Well, I think that's the point. They are so committed to anyone who hasn't ever worked in politics, they will throw a responsible journalist doing a great that job like under an the excuse. bus. That sounds no, like an excuse. No, it's an explanation. It excuses nothing. Mm. But if you want to win, the most important person to understand is not your ally, it's your enemy. If you want to take a politician down, you better get on their side of the table and understand them. And the bottom line is that if not Trump, then second right now in the GOP is Ben Carson. Right. Right. right? And Car Carly is Fiorina he, has great momentum. Still, though? What's that? Is Ben Carson still second? If not, he's he's definitely. I think we saw your your guy Kasich, Kasich. is yeah. now. Kasich had raised up. John Kasich is is second in New, New Hampshire, New Hampshire. Right. and that's where he's putting all his chips into the middle right. of the table. Right. So long way to New Hampshire, but uh, Kasich clearly is is doing a great he's job up there. Along. While Chris Christie has just faded into Vanished. oblivion. Yeah. He was using the same strategy, and that's going the Giuliani route at this point. Anyway, my point is that whether it's Carson, whether it's Cruz, I know Cruz is a senator, but he portrays himself as anti-establishment, calls yeah. Washington the Washington cartel, and Carly Fiorina, or even on the Democratic side, Bernie Sanders, I know right. he's a senator, but he plays himself as an outsider also. You're an outsider, you're going to do well right. uh, in this upcoming election, no question but about it. it. Yeah. Doesn't Go it fascinate you that, that, you know, I know we all have our political favorites, we all have our ideologies, and that's fine. But is it not a bad thing that somebody would ask the question, what is, what kind of a record does Joe Biden have to run on? I understand you may disagree with the man, but he's... He meant accomplishments. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's that. exactly right. When yeah. he said record, he meant record of positive. Now, if you ask, record. is the culture got a problem when we confuse you, you any accomplishment agree? with what you already agree with? Yes, that's a larger don't problem. Don't you kind of agree that if that gentleman were to go back and look at his record over all these years, he might find some things that even he might agree with? Well, I would tend to think there might be some value there, I mean, he's but not he's a, looking at eight But years the larger of problem is Joe's point. We assume and equate an accomplishment with something we ourselves would support. It's a mistake, I mean, but both sides a, do that's it. That's the point. It's a mistake. I mean, it's good to know what the other people have done. You're not going to agree with everything. I, I understand, but you need to be educated. You need to know. Okay, very good. Uh, 
think he was just talking vice president, eight years. I don't want more Obama moving forward. I think that's more, though. Oh, that's true. Okay. This will be a whole block tomorrow night. (laughs) (laughs) Remember, if you want to weigh in on any of these issues we talk about here on the show, go to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments and let us know. Up next, time for yay or nay. This is The Daily Wrap. And if you want your own Make America Great Again hat, just like the one Donald Trump wears, go to Newsmax.com slash TrumpCap or call 1-800-933-8396. Again, go to Newsmax.com slash TrumpCap or call 1-800-933-8396. Welcome back to Daily Wraps. Happy time. Time for nay or yay. First up, the Center for Medical Progress, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit, released another Planned Parenthood video. This time, STEM Express CEO Kate Dyer is seen laughing over the difficulty of procuring fatal neural tissue. As you probably know, potentially, I mean, I think that one of one of the issues with neural tissue is so fragile. It's insanely right. fragile. Right. Um, I was going to say is that um, I, I, I know we get requests for it's the hardest thing in the world to ship. Um, you do is the whole Calvarium. That's it. Yeah, 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 that's the easiest way. And I mean, I, we've, we've actually had good success with that in the past. So, um, like, make sure the eyes are closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the lab it's coming. Yeah. Sit all open the box. Oh, God. <laughs> that is an evil laugh. And are these people ever not eating? Order in once. They're always at a restaurant somewhere. There's always different wine. Different people. You we're going down a weird road here. Which go ahead and ask the question. Okay. And well, I'll get there. well, look. I know they're different people. That but wasn't Planned Parenthood. What's that? That was stem cell. The, the lunch meetings. Enough with the lunch meetings. Yeah. In general, I'm, I'm sick of hearing about babies being be kept completely here. intact. Yeah, I all know, right. But you over you know, lunch. It was one of Stem Cell Express's people that that really broke the story out last week Correct. with that tape. So we're all going, okay, we're paying attention to her because mm-hmm. she's ratting out Planned Parenthood, and there's nothing that happens in this tape that's very damning. So now we're going after Stem Cell, you know, who's a distributor has is not related to to Planned Parenthood. We're all looking too hard now. There's a story here. There's an investigation that is required. Let's not get carried away Will there be an investigation? Yeah, your name. I hope so. I mean, there'll certainly be a congressional one, but I won't take that seriously. I will take an FBI investigation seriously. Heather. I just don't see people. I think the people who are against it are staying against it, but the other people just don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear about it. They don't don't talk about it. It's not being talked about in other news networks. I think they're just putting their heads in the sand about it. I think you're right about that. Yes. I think there has to be an investigation. I think the average person watches these tapes, the distinctions, the company is a Planned Parenthood, they don't care. What they're realizing is there is too close a connection between a kind of cavalier attitude about human life and medical research. That's not healthy, but it's not appropriate, right. and there needs to be an investigation. But it's not about defunding. Yeah, the government's not funding stem cell no, I, I agree, and, and that's an important business. distinction, right. but the popular support by the necessity for an investigation that will keep it from going away is fueled I'm by this, and we all deserve that investigation. Let's be clear. The CEO Planned Parenthood said originally she welcomed it. We should hold her to her word. I exactly. Agree. So I agree. On, uh, ABC's this week, I believe, yeah. a couple weeks ago. Anyway, we've been discussing anchor babies and the 14th Amendment a lot on the show lately. A lot of the focus has been on the immigration process and how to control the borders. But cost is also a major factor. According to the Center for Immigration Studies, in one year, anywhere from 350 to 400,000 children are born to illegal alien mothers residing in the United States. And 71% of those families families received some sort of welfare in 2009. Costing the U.S. government and taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars is the abuse of birthright citizenship the argument that the GOP should be making on this issue. Brad Hirschfield. No. No. Neither. I agree. It, it's too complicated. The more e- the easier argument, the more simple argument, the argument that people can understand is the is the Fourteenth Amendment. Right. Okay. Rick. I completely agree. This is a much more complicated issue. It is a constitutional issue. Okay. Everybody's right. Okay, bobbleheads again. <laughs> Moving on to something a little more fun. Donald Trump posted a new video to Instagram that's using former First Lady Barbara Bush's words against her own family. Would you like to see him run? No, I really don't. I think it's a great country. There are a lot of great families. There are, just, there are other people out there that are very qualified, and we've had enough Bushes. 
time. Mr. Trump did manage to cut out the part where she says Jeb is the best qualified person for the job, but I digress. Are these videos helping or hurting Donald Trump, Heather Hansen? I don't think they're doing either. I don't think, I think Trump's fans don't really, that, that's not what draws them. It seems like Bush is always the target because yeah. I guess that's establishment guy, that's the guy closest in the polls, and it's always Bush, Bush, and, Bush. And, and I think that most of the Republican Party still believes at the end of the day, Jeb Bush will be the nominee. Including you, Rick Unger. Yes. Okay. Hirschfield? I don't know if he's the nominee or not, but it's tacky, it's classless. Barbara Bush, one of the classiest ladies in politics, and what Trump's doing here is wrong. Yeah. Well. But you're right, it won't affect his supporters. That's third rail kind of stuff. Anyway, on behalf of Rick Unger, thank you, panel. Appreciate it. Great show tonight. And next is the Steve Malsberg Show. Really? That's next.